to my channel. I am Michelle and I'm in my living room again and I have a puppy behind me. There's a puppy over there and a puppy over there and they're all sleeping so hopefully they don't get up and start making noise now that I'm talking but I'm finally going to do my all the sweaters that I've made until I started filming video and I hope it's not too long because I have a literal mountain of sweaters here and I'd like to talk specifically about them, like the yarn I used and the construction. And yeah, so <laughs> I've been putting it off, but it's, I gotta get it over with. So let's just do it. I got coffee. I might need a refill soon. It's getting low, but it's in my little bear mug that Tom got me in Harajuku, my little Starbucks mug. And it's gonna keep me going today because it is a lot. <laughs> when I started knitting, I did a lot of infinity scarves and I quickly got bored of that. So I'm, I wanna say I started knitting sweaters pretty immediately, mostly chunky ones. This was one of the first. This is um, the Wonder Wool by Wool and the Gang. And it is knit flat in stockinette, but then you sew the front together with the knit side out and you sew the sleeves on with the purl side out, which is really cool. And it's not supposed to look like this. <laughs> if they have a video tutorial on YouTube, I will link that. But yeah, their yarn they used was way chunkier than mine. So mine's just kind of like, real chain y which I really don't hate at all. I actually really love this. The only thing that bothered me when I first made it was there's like little holes from where you do the increases and cause like the neckline is done on smaller needles and then you knit a few rows and then you increase and it just made these big holes. So I wish I would have maybe increased with the smaller needles instead of doing it with the larger needles. Cause I think they were done on I don't want to lie. I want to say it was like 15 milliliters, which is insane. Millimeters. <laughs> 10 or 15. They're, it's pretty chunky. But I did... Ugh, ooh, couch maneuvers. I did a split seam on the side. It's cozy. I wear it more often than on the other sweaters that I made when I started out. I knit it with... I believe this is Bernat uh, Mega Bulky could be wrong but it's a two ply yarn it's pilling a lot because it's been I mean six years now which yeah I really like it it's fun to just throw on it's kind of hot today so I was gonna wear a different sweater which I'll probably put on later because I could only fit like half of the sweaters on my whiteboard. I think before this sweater, I made this t-shirt, which I never ever wear. Oh, it's so warm because it was under Link's butt. Oh, Link, you're so cozy. Yeah, it's, it's like a t-shirt with some kind of like lacy bubbly stitch on the top and then like the same thing on the bottom, which is not cute <laughs> in this Red Heart yarn. And I'm pretty sure, I don't remember if this was I know it was a YouTube video. It might have been by someone speaking Russian. I can't remember. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it was in Russian and I just like copied her movements <laughs> and got this t-shirt. It would be really cute as like a sweater. I think I did want to go back and like make the sleeves longer but I don't know it's actually like I don't know how I did this because I really like this neckline I'll have to like see if I can find that video but yeah this I don't even want to frog this because I just can't be bothered <laughs> I like to keep it because it's my first ever garment so everything I have is mostly gray and then I have some pinks 
a lot of what I did was pink because like I said in my first video, I watched a ton of Christy Glass videos when I lived in Japan and for some reason, I thought that I was like a bubbly pink person. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know because like that is not how I want to portray myself. <laughs> but so yeah, a lot of the pink sweaters, I will put pictures up, but I don't have them anymore. I have two, two pink sweaters. That's it. <laughs> and that was knit in Red Heart. I don't know if I said that, but I hate this yarn, this gray. It's not comfy at all. This gauge is pretty tight too. I do have some sweaters with this yarn at a looser gauge, which feels better, but it's still not great. This feels like you're wearing a plastic bag. Like it's not, it's not fun. So after I knit this monstrosity, which I still have like a little, I just, I used to just tie, I, I think I still do. I'm not gonna lie to you. Tie the ends and just leave them. And it seems to work. <laughs> yep, this side too, just tied it, whatever, forget about it. But yeah. <laughs> After I made this one, I wanted to make a bunch of sweaters and the bulky ones knit up so fast, so I made a ton of those. Ugh. I don't even think I have them. I don't have them all listed on my whiteboard. I have two of them listed. And one of them is the sweater that I made for Tom. I'm pretty sure this is bottom up. It's huge. It's, it's a dress on me. Um, it's knit in Lion Brand, hometown. Cambridge Tweed, I think. I, I think I needed like 10 balls. <laughs> it's just massive and so heavy. It's ridiculously heavy. I don't know how he wears this thing, but it is cute with like gray leggings. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's cozy. It's just really heavy. I did want to say, oh, I'm so sorry, Eloy, are you okay? Are you okay? Um, I wasn't big on patterns when I started out, so I would just go on YouTube and look up video tutorials, and I found one by Nitpicks where it was like a three-part video on like making your own pattern, so I did that a lot, <laughs> and this was one of them, and... Yeah, it's just easy bottom up. I don't even think I like gauge swatched. I never gauge swatch. If you have been here long enough, you know that. I've done it maybe like two or three times, but I don't know. I just, a lot of my sweaters are, I just winged it. <laughs> so there's that one. And then there was a blue one that I made. I think I made like a normal navy one that's just plain in the same style. I made a purple one for my mom. I made a blue, another blue one for my sister, all with Lion Brand hometown. I made a navy one with like some design that I drew in on graph paper. I have a graph paper notebook and I just would draw things and then put them into sweater patterns. And that one, I, it's just so weird to think, like I don't remember the progression of my, my venture into color work, but that one, I feel like, I don't know. I wanna say that was my first color work sweater. I don't remember what my first color work ever was, but a lot of my sweaters were just adapted from those nitpicks videos, so I owe a lot of my knitting skills to those videos, and 
It took me so long to find them, but I found them and I'm going to link them down below because they're super helpful if you're new or you just want to... Like there's people who don't knit sweaters and they've been knitting forever. And it, it is scary venturing into a new skill in knitting, but those videos make it super helpful. So if you want to check them out, go ahead. They're awesome. My next sweater is a colorwork sweater that I did for Tom. It is the Wilderness Sweater by Lincoln Newman. And it is his little puppy paws. And I want to knit this one again. I also have plans to make a headband with it and let Lopi she has patterns for that too and she has patterns for baby sweaters i talked about this one in my in the video where i talked about my accessories that i made i did mess up right here on the neckband because it's supposed to be the same color as the body i believe but it doesn't look bad so i left it this one's bottom up and you do a little color work on the cuffs or after the cuffs and on the bottom and yeah this is that gross red heart gray that I hate so much the blue might be Karen a lot of these are Karen and red heart one or the other or together I don't know I just I mean we lived in Japan and all I could get was whatever they had at the BX which was mostly red heart and Karen and lion brand but that is that one. The white in this is a Tweety red heart, which is a little bit softer. And I've used that a lot in sweaters. I have two sweaters, I believe, that have that. So this one's Tom's. And then you've seen mine. It's the one that I wore in my last video. And it is very bright. Very, very bright. But I absolutely love it. And I... I would wear it more if it wasn't for this gray. I just cannot stand this gray. I really don't mind the the teal and the pink, but the gray, I just cannot. <laughs> I can't live with it. I'm so over gray. I don't know why I knit so much gray. Ugh. I should have just done the whole thing white. I think I said that last time. But yeah, Lincoln Newman. Amazing pattern writer, amazing designer, amazing person. She has a book. Just all of her patterns are incredible. So yeah. This one was super fun and it's got puppy paws. The next sweater is my take on the Zadie sweater by Mercedes Knits. And the grocery girls did a knit along for this sweater. I literally didn't do anything to pattern <laughs> except for the raglans. And I, I think I started this when Tom was in the hospital for his appendix. Or I started a sleeve. I think I was on the sleeves at that point. And yeah, I just I wear it sometimes. This is that tweedy color I was talking about. I really love this. I don't know. I don't know. The neck is kind of tight with what I did with it. I don't know. I just like knit so many super tight necks. When I started, both my mom and my sister said that <laughs> like the neck hole is tight to get through and the armpits are super tight so I had to work on that a lot when I was first starting out and I think it's much better now <laughs> but it was tough but I really love this design it's got super pretty cable and one half of the cable is garter stitch and I just thought that was really smart little cable so I just wanted a big oversize. I mean, it's pretty freaking big. And I have to keep the, <laughs> this, <laughs> the sides always rolled because of my watch. <laughs> so funny. But yeah, 
That one is also bottom up. And also knit with red heart. <laughs> the next is you, I believe. Oh no. Oh, I do have a lot that I need to talk about that are not here. There is the Crop Drop Stitch Pullover by Lion Brand. And I knit that in the their Honolulu Pink hometown. And I'll put a picture of that up. That one I gave to my sister. That one is, I think it was knit. Was it knit side to side? I can't remember. I think it was actually knit side to side. I thought I haven't knit a sweater from like one arm to the other, but I think that one is knit like that. You knit it all the way across, pick up stitches, you bind off for the neck, pick up again when you're done the neck, and then you decrease for the sides and then go this way. And then you sew it all the way down the sleeves. But first you drop stitches in the front and in the back. And it leaves this cool like, open I don't know lacy effect <laughs> not really lacy but it's just it looks cool and it would probably be cool in like a black yarn or something that I wear <laughs> but I did I did wear it a lot it also would be better if it wasn't as cropped as it was but I think for most people it would probably fit them for me it was just like way too short so I gave that to my sister because she is small, tiny human. I'm like a freaking, I'm like a damn Amazonian or something. <laughs> so there's that one. There's also the Mythically Chunky Brioche Bomber Jacket by Knit Safari, which is amazing and would also be really cool knit in black. But for some reason I knit it in the same pink. And I think I gave that one to my mom or my sister. I don't know. They got everything. They come to visit and I load them up with sweaters and send them home. Like, I just get these out of my closet because <laughs> I just can't look at them anymore. There's so many that they have. That one, I think was knit bottom up just the, or was it seamed? I can't remember, honestly, but you knit the sleeves cuff up and then you sew them on, I believe. But they're like so cozy. The sleeves are so nice. Oh, the brioche, it took so long, but I mean, even on chunky yarn, it took so long. I think that was my first brioche. Either that or one of the cows from the last episode. But that one was really fun. I also knit a tiny little pink crop top with that whatever that design is that looks like icicles or I guess it looks like trees if you do it a certain way I don't know I just found a chart and I made my own thing with it <laughs> I also looked up a bunch of like yoke charts on Pinterest or just like charts just charted designs and I would adapt them and make them into yoke sweaters like I, when I started out, I did everything the most creatively because of I didn't have access to Ravelry patterns. I didn't have access to anything, but basically when I started doing actual patterns, it was like stuff I could find on YouTube, drops, and like free stuff because I didn't really have the means to be buying patterns. But there are so many sweaters that I don't have that are on this list. The next one is the Jess's birthday sweater. And I knit this one three times, I believe. I did one for my neighbor in green. I did one for my sister. Actually, I think they're all in green. I did one for my neighbor, one for my sister, and one for myself, which I eventually gave to someone because I don't have it. But my sisters, I did a different cuff and hem. I did like, I saw a, a picture of a sweater on Pinterest that had like a brick design for the hem. I don't know how to 
describe it. I probably have a picture of it though on my Instagram and I'll post it up here or something. But hers I did like brick tough. <laughs> so that one's just a little different. That is a v-neck sweater that is knit bottom up and it's got cables and there's only one size but you can absolutely start it in a bigger size. You could do waist decrease. I think there are waist decreases in the pattern because it was designed for like one specific person but they just released the pattern for free. And yeah, you. I mean, it's just a cable chart and you could do as many side stitches as you want to make it your size. So it's not like size inclusive, but it is adaptable, which is what I did because <laughs> Not everyone is tiny. <laughs> but that was done in a green red heart yarn, which I used to really like, but it's just become so vibrantly green. Like I always used to think it was a deep green. And now that I've knit with actual deep green yarn, I'm like, this is not cute. <laughs> so I ended up getting rid of it. The next one is a blue lacy sweater that I gave to my mom. I'm pretty sure. That one is by Trops. It's called Miss Moss. And I knit it in the navy red heart. And that one was super fun. The sleeves are, I think it's top down. I'm pretty sure it's top down. And the sleeves are moss stitch. And then there's just the lace going all the way down. And that one was cool. I don't know why I knit it in navy. I'm not. Although, <laughs> when I used to have bright red hair, I wore a lot of navy. So a lot of my sweaters are navy. But I started knitting after I dyed my hair back to brown. So I don't know why I knit a bunch of navy sweaters. But anyway, that one was cool. <laughs> and the next like five or six are all drops patterns. So I will put them up here because I don't have any of them. Actually, that's a lie. I have, I have two of them. I'll show them now. <laughs> So this one's my favorite. It is, it is called the Selvik, and I've knit this twice. The other one you can see on the corner right there. Um, this one is, I knit this in two days <laughs> because I was so excited about it. I, this is my first all over color work sweater and I don't wear it too much, but I used to wear it a lot. I should wear it more. It's just so gorgeous. It was so much fun to make. I knit this in Karen and this green or this teal, I guess, is just so nice and shiny. Ugh. I think it's Karen Simply Soft and I made the cuff super long. Oh, it's just so comfy. The only thing is that the, the hips I, I cast off like way too tight. So it's very snug around my hips, but other than that, it's really not that bad. I wear it as much as I can, but not as much as I should. <laughs> oh, so nice. And this is top down. Um, I knit one also right before, actually, I think, I don't remember if I started it in Japan or if I started it after we got here, but it is bright pink. And yeah, it's just not, not me, dude. <laughs> I thought about unraveling it. It took me so long to make this, like probably years. It took me so long. But I guess that's probably because the first one took me two days. So the second one, I was like, ah, whatever. I already have one. But I don't know why I knit it in this color. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think about unraveling it. But then I don't know if I, I don't think I cut when I changed colors, no. This pattern is really good, too, for floats. Because there's not a lot of float catching. Like at all. It's very, like you don't go more than three to four stitches without
without changing color. So that was nice. Yeah, I think the most is five stitches. So it's not too bad. But yeah, if I rip it out, I'll probably make like a baby sweater or something with it. A couple of baby sweaters because it's pretty big. That is the Selvik by Drops. The next Drops is called Dear to My Heart and it's an, a crop sweater with little hearts and I made it in like Neapolitan ice cream colors and I love it so much. And I gave that one to my sister and it's super cute. Ugh, it's just so cute. That one I made right before we left Japan and yeah, I knit a lot of sweaters while we were waiting to fly to Seattle. And I definitely didn't save enough yarn after we packed up. So I went a little crazy. <laughs> My luggage was just like all yarn. <laughs> so there's that one. I'm pretty sure that one was knit top down. And I used Red Heart for all the colors. I'm pretty sure I used this pink, which is Red Heart. I think this is Red Heart and my teal one is Karen. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next one was a gorgeous color work yoke that had flowers and I gave that one to my mom. I knit it in light blue and white and I'm pretty sure those were also Karen Simply Soft. And that is the Periwinkle by drops and I don't know why I wanted to knit it like exactly to pattern but I love that sweater and I made it way too big <laughs> so I ended up giving that to my mom and also the Pearl du Nord which was also by drops which I made in navy and white and red heart I believe and I'll put a picture up of that too that one I wore a ton that one same thing too big I just never like, after I started knitting with natural fibers, I just, I just couldn't go back to my <laughs> acrylic sweaters. It makes me so sad because I spent so much work on them, so much time and energy and learning, but it's fun to look back at them and appreciate them. I do wear some of them. But the ones I don't wear, I'm going to rip back. Speaking of which, this one. <laughs> I love this sweater and it's so cozy. It's got a brioche collar and it's so like scrunchy and wonderful. And it's called Wonderfully Wooly by Paint Box Yarns. And I think Very Pink Knits did a little knit along tutorial thing for this. I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern. This color is gorgeous. I don't remember what yarn this is, but it's like this beautiful like pinky coral. I've never worn it because I just don't wear pink and I also don't really do turtlenecks very well, so I'll just never wear it. So I'm going to frog this one, but I was waiting to show you guys because it's just so squishy. If you like brioche and like these like bushy collars then yes do this this pattern rocks i'm pretty sure it's knit in worsted weight okay oh hello <laughs> so my camera shut off and i had to free up space but we're back and i think i was saying that this is knit in worsted weight i can't remember what i said after that before it shut off nebula is destroying my sweater tower Oh boy, okay. And Link is boofing at me for some reason. What you boofing for, huh? What you boofing for? You're like right off the screen. Yeah. You're so handsome. Oh. Everyone can hear you being a bad boy. Huh. Everyone can hear you boofing, Link. What you need? I love you. I love you. Oh my god, okay, stop it.
So yeah, I'm sorry if you can hear Link panting over here, <laughs> but he wants something that I don't know what it is. <laughs> so now I have to get my sweaters back from over here. The next sweater is one I was seeing a lot, but I could not find like any kind of pattern for it. So I just did it myself and it turned out okay. I think I made two of these and I ended up giving one of them to my sister maybe, but it is this cute leaf pattern. It's so pretty. This is actually one of the acrylic sweaters that I like the most and it's got leaves on the sleeves. I was actually gonna wear this one, but it's really hot out, but I might just, I don't know. I want to throw it on so I'm gonna do that be right back so yeah it's this gorgeous like vampiric red blood color and I just am obsessed with it and I love it so much the only thing is like it's pretty see-through because of the leaf lace so you have to wear tank top under it or whatever but not a problem uh, the sleeves also have leaves and all the sweaters that I've seen done like this are done flat and seamed and I am not about that life. So I did it in the round and Nebula is going to show off her beautiful shedding pattern right now. Gorgeous. We love that for you. <coughs> okay, we can't, <laughs> can we not do this <laughs> while mama's filming? Can we not do that? So I did this one bottom up and in the round. And it took me it took me a lot of trial and error, especially up around the hi. What are you doing? Oh my god. Do you see yourself? <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> it took a lot of trial and error. Um yeah, I just I have so many notes on it. I just, <laughs> My sweaters! How could you? Oh no! So the bottom part was getting bunchy. And I had to redo that a bunch of times up where I was doing the raglans because the whole top is pearl stitch. It was really confusing how to do the raglans that way because I've never done that before. But I figured it out. I don't know how I figured it out. But I did, and it's like one of my favorite acrylic sweaters. So it turned out good. I love it. It's such a cool color. Oh, I love it. But that unfortunately has no pattern that I've been able to find. And I just, I don't know, I made it up. I even made up, like, I, I could only find a couple like leaf stitch patterns on Pinterest that I liked and I kind of merged a few of them. I was just so much more adventurous <laughs> back when I started knitting than I am now, like just following patterns. Ugh, I need to get back into it. But anyway, that's my little, my leaf sweater. Oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable. My next one is the Nebula pillow. Ugh otherwise known as the winter morning sweater by Knitting for Breakfast. And it's just this nice, gentle, lace, fuzzy, oversized, like Sunday morning coffee sweater with this deep neckline or whatever. Not, I guess it's not deep. It's just a, just a chunky collar. And I do wear this a lot. I don't wear it a lot out. <laughs> Another rolled cuff because of my Apple Watch. Yeah, I can't see it with sleeves. <sighs> but it is a really fun pattern. I don't know what yarn this is. It's a really fluffy yarn. I also used it for the bubble wrap by Luisa Casella, which I made for my friend's daughter. And I'll put a picture up there which was a really cute pattern, super easy and quick and fun. And it's not bobbles, which was a plus because I hate bobbles. But anyway, if this was in a different color, I might wear it more, but I just, I don't know. Like, what do you do, throw this over jeans? I'm not a, I'm not a fashion person. Like, 
<laughs> I wear black dresses and mostly like workout pants. That's it. And like, yeah. It's hard for me to wear even the sweaters that I have made that I like because if they're not cropped enough, they look weird over dresses. But like, I also don't like wearing jeans. <laughs> So everything is just stupid. But anyway, this is a really fun pattern and it's, I think it's free. So that's good. Knitting for breakfast has a lot of cool patterns and they're, I don't, I haven't seen it in a while, but when I first found them, their Instagram aesthetic is like God tier. So if you don't follow that account, go there. They're like, oh, it's always like a new color scheme, but it's not like vibrant colors. It's like earthy colors and I don't know. It was very like woodsy and frosty and <laughs> it has that, that good fade on it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that's another sweater, oversized, cozy sweater. This is probably like the most basic sweater that I have. Like, not in terms of design, in terms of like style. Cream, I don't, I'm not a beige cream person. Although I do knit <laughs> a few speckled things. This is the swivel and honestly, I should put this on, but I don't know if it fits me anymore because I've gained so much weight. But yeah, I'll put up some pictures. Um, this pattern is amazing. It's knit bottom up. So you start at the hips and there are so many charts and so many directions and it is by carry knits. So it comes around your hips and then it goes up to join at the center of your back at the top. And then there's this gorgeous little cable at the neckline and then it goes into a V neck and there's also like a pretty cable above the collar. I mean, above the cuff. And it's just like, this pattern is incredible. And I want to knit it not in acrylic because I don't think it does it justice. Ugh. Shoot, maybe this is what I should do with my golden ticket. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I will. Anyway. Yes, Carrie Knits, incredible designer, and she has very detailed instructions. And there's also an entire page of like chart tracking so that you know exactly when, because the cable charts are moving. I'm gonna pull up a cat here. <laughs> so you know exactly where to decrease or increase and what row of the chart you're on. And yeah, you can just track it the whole way. So it's, yeah, it's just super detailed. I don't even know how to explain it. I just remember seeing it and being like, why aren't all patterns like this? Because I'm, I'm the kind of person who like literally puts tally marks on a paper for every single row if I'm doing cables or if I'm doing any kind of like intricate color work that I can't memorize. So that whole chart system was just a brilliant idea and I love it so much. So I cannot speak. <sighs> I can't speak more highly of this sweater. Like I love it so much and I would love to do it in a non acrylic yarn. Although I do love this speckled yarn. I just don't know if this would fit me right now. And I'm pretty sure there's multiple sizes. I, I don't think this is a one size pattern because that would be insane. It's so nice though. Ugh. So nice. Okay. So this is where I started getting into my actual style, which is more like woodsy witchy vibes. 
I don't know what I was doing <laughs> before that. I guess, I don't know. I was just like going with what you just see on the internet and it just wasn't me and that's why I never wore any of this stuff. But anyway, so next, still acrylic, but witchy vibes. It is my, my witching hour swancho. It's so pretty. Ugh, it's such a good pattern. And I am kind of sad that I don't wear it as much as I would like, just because it's a swancho. And like, if I raise my arms, you're gonna see everything. So I did try to knit this as a sweater. And like, I had, I changed the chart a little bit so that it made sense and fit and everything was like the right size. But for some reason, I just wasn't loving the yarn that I was working with, so I ripped it back. But I will put a picture of it because it was awesome. Um, this pattern is by, I'm gonna butcher this name, Dear Ingenie. I don't know how to say it, but her patterns are incredible. She does so many uh, like Corvid style patterns. She's got hats, cowls. I have some of them, I just haven't started. She also did the Dead of Night, which I test knit in purple and white, or I guess not white, just natural. I'll put a picture of that up too. I ended up gifting it to my bestie, but yeah, I wanna make one of those again. I just, I freaking love this sweater and I, I need to make the Dead of Night again. That's all, <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. I don't remember what the brand of yarn is. It's, it's nice tweedy it comes in like a big chunky thing but it's acrylic and i was so excited to make this Ugh. i love it so that was my last acrylic sweater aside from one that i aside from ones that i make for people like if i make gift sweaters I will use acrylic just because I don't want any accidents or any like I don't want anyone to be worried about it being itchy because what I can tolerate is vastly different from what other people can tolerate so I just like to be safe and use acrylic but my first ever sweater that was not acrylic yarn was my Isho by Catherine Clark and it is still to this day one of my favorite patterns because I mean it's just gorgeous I think everyone loves this I kind of wish I would have made it in a different color I don't know why I did blue I I just looked at the at the yarn I can't it was like Ella Ray I think yarn the blue and the yellow is uh, Malabrigo in the color ochre but oh my god, it's just so nice. So like, I. it's so weird because like knitting a sweater like the, I'm so sorry Link, I took your pillow. Like this one's probably not a good example because this one's actually nice acrylic yarn. But like, I, it just, it's so stiff. I mean, granted it's also worsted weight, but watch out Moldy, I'll put your pillow back. Look at, oh goodness, there you go. You're a good boy. I don't know. This was also the first sweater that I ever knit on like needles smaller than a 5.5 millimeter. So, and I'm pretty sure this was knit on like a three, <laughs> like 3.5 or something. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I knit it pretty quick, I think. Also, the intarsia on the sleeves was difficult. I think I ended up I think up here I knit in the round, but then once I got to these little moons or dots, whatever they are, I ended up just, I would knit like all the rows and then I would knit like one or two rows down and then I would just do um, duplicate stitch because I mean, they're so tiny. I wasn't gonna go all the way around with that. 
Actually, yeah, all of these are duplicate stitch. So that wasn't too bad. I mean, it doesn't look bad at all and it looks amazing and I love this so much. The only thing is, it was like my first time holding floats with uh, super wash yarns and natural fibers. So it is a bit tight in the shoulders. Like if I were to put it on and like raise my arms a little, it gets tight, but it still stretches pretty well. My floats are all over the place. I will show you. There's, there's some that are just like, how did this happen? How did this get so long? Like, <laughs> this side's not as bad. But like, what even is this <laughs> or that? They're just long, some of them. I honestly have no idea what caused that. That one, like the stitch that is hooking it is all messed up. I just don't know. But it looks good on the outside. <laughs> That's all I care about. I was like stretching it and stuff, seeing like, did, did something get pulled, but no, just weird loose inside. And I couldn't tell you if I messed up anywhere because either I don't remember or I didn't notice. <laughs> it's just like, oh, there's so many different charts and like making everything match up and line up was pretty difficult, but overall it was totally worth it. I freaking love the bottom too. This is just an incredible pattern and I want to make it in like, I think black and gray would be cool or black and white. Kind of like my moonlight romp, but I don't know, maybe even black and like yellow would be cool. I don't know. I just, I love this so much and this yarn is so squishy. And then I started knitting with non superwash wool which was incredible and I knit five love note sweaters of which I have two uh if I can find pictures of the other ones I'll put them up but I gave them to my sister my mom and my brother's girlfriend and I made mine kind of cropped this is I don't remember what the brand of this yarn is but it's it's 100% wool and it's freaking gorgeous let me get it closer I don't know if the colors will come out but it's got like a whole bunch of different colors in with the purple blues and pinks and teal and red oh so pretty but yeah I just throw it on over a dress and it's cozy the sleeves aren't long enough which I don't love I think I have more of this yarn so I could potentially go back and make the sleeves longer same thing with my other one which is knit in, actually this is Superwash yarn from Labrevis from Knit Crate and some mohair held together. And it is, this is the first one I made and it's just one of my all time favorites. But also the sleeves are too short. They literally come to like my elbow. So I'm, I really don't want to rip back this mohair especially since I've washed it so many times and I, I mean, I finished it like, like two years ago. I don't know, but I don't really wear these two that often. Whew, I don't know. I would love to just go back and, I mean, and this color is my favorite. Oh, I will say, I don't remember what brand the mohair was, but I got it, I think on eBay and I am not that thrilled with it. It's kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like mohair, it feels like plastic. So that's not the greatest. It is very warm, which is great, but it's not great when your sleeves don't go all the way down. If you're cold <laughs> and you throw on a sweater that's warm, you'd think you'd be warm everywhere, but the sleeves are just, Oh, sure. Other than that, it's an awesome pattern. Tin can knits, love note, and I, I'm pretty sure my mom wears hers a lot. I don't, 
my sister's was also a Grievous, the baby alpaca in green, which is the the green that I used for my ranunculus on during our trip to Disney that I was knitting on in the car ride, which I still have so much left over of that yarn and I want to make something else, but I don't know what yet. Ooh, maybe a tank top. Would a tank top in baby alpaca be good? I feel like it would be like too saggy. Unless it was like meant to be like that. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have one more. One more sweater to share with you. And you've seen it so many times because it is my most worn sweater. It is the Feline Phantom from Curio Stitches and it is literally covered in hay and dog hair and little fluffs and everything you could think of because I literally wear this thing every chance I get. I wanna make another one in like black and white probably. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I completely love this pattern so much. It is knit, oh, I just should have said that the last like four sweaters were knit top down. I haven't knit a bottom up, a bottom up sweater since Probably the swivel so yeah anyway this is knit bottom up look at me whining <laughs> this one is knit bottom up and is it not round no yes no yes no <laughs> okay it's been so long so you knit the cuff or the hem you knit the hem in the round and then you knit the front and back separately doing like intarsia for the kitty and then you knit the sleeves and then you I'm pretty sure I knit the sleeves bottom up and then sewed them on but I don't see why you couldn't did I knit the sleeves bottom up and sew them on Yes. I feel like you could also knit the front and back, do the top ribbing, sew it together, or graft it even, and then like pick up sleeves and knit down, and then sew the side down. Or you could just do the whole thing flat and seam it. It's your sweater. <laughs> do what you want. But yeah. I'm pretty positive. I knit the front and back and then sewed the shoulders together and then I knit the sleeves and then I sewed the sleeves on and then I seamed the, the sides. Pretty sure. But it's got this nice wide neck which I like tighter necks but it's, it's really cute. It's actually really cute and I like it. It's just such a good sweater. Ugh. I wear it over dresses. I wear it over literally everything. I wear this sweater more than any of the other sweaters that I have. <laughs> and I knit this in yarn that I dyed. Ooh, I can't remember where I got it. I want to say it was wet belly fibers, which they don't sell yarn anymore. This is my foxy colorway and black. <laughs> oh, that is a black. Yep, it is my most favoriteest, most worn sweater. There are a few that I started and ripped out. I think I did a, what was I doing? Oh goodness. I had a Zweig that I ripped out, which was beautiful, but I just, wasn't gonna work on it for some reason. What, there was another Caitlin Hunter pattern that I started and ripped out. There was this bag, which was the one with the lace. And then there was the Soldana, which was also beautiful. And I ripped it out. I don't, I just don't know. I think with this bag, the, I was using Lion Brand's um touch of alpaca for the body and the sleeves but the lace i used like a fingering super wash and it just didn't 
fit well together. It looked beautiful together, but like the texture was not right. And I was like, I'll never wear this. I'll never be happy with it if I finish it. So I just ripped it back. And the Soldatna, I don't remember. I think that one was the one where I was like, I just don't, I never picked it up. I loved it. I loved the way it looked, but I did so many other things with that yarn after cropping it. So that one wasn't too bad. Oh, I do have another one. There's the Moonbeam by Bad Wolf Girl that I made for my friend's daughter. And that one is an acrylic yarn. She wanted blue and pink. <laughs> and I don't think it fits her anymore, but she, she really tries to get in it. Like, <laughs> it's so cute. I have to make her another one. Her and her mom got matching um, sweaters because her mom got the Estreas that I knit, I think last year, in the purple and gold. Oh, oh my gosh. So those are all my sweaters that I knit up until I started recording. And then, I mean, you can see from there what I've done, but I'm just gonna show you this pile real quick because it's, Cutest thing ever. So here's our pile and here's our linky sleep in between the, the sweaters. Huh? You sleep in? You sleeping bugs? I'm such a good boy. And then we have these girls sleeping on the couch. They're just chilling. Being good for once. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Say thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>